Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne Tha Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line right now, Jelani Anglin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, you're from Good Call. Now, for, for people that don't know what Good Call is, explain to them what Good Call is. Good Call is a completely free hotline in case of arrest, connecting anyone to a lawyer 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 in all five boroughs in New York City. If anyone gets arrested, you can contact a lawyer on the spot who will be able to invoke your rights and get started on your case right away. Now, can you call them when you're actually in the car getting arrested and getting pulled over? Because I know there's somewhere you could actually have them on speakerphone or on FaceTime when you're actually getting pulled over, or is this when you get arrested? So we say the best time to use it when you're in the precinct and they give you that phone call to so call our hotline. Uh, but also you can have loved ones calling your behalf. We've had folks that got arrested, they called a loved one, you know, a relative, and then that relative also called our hotline on their behalf. We still were able to invoke their rights to make sure they got a lawyer right away. Now, sometimes it's really difficult to think about hiring a lawyer because it can be expensive. So let's talk about that part. How much does it cost? Do you come out of pocket? Are there different levels? Yeah, no, we are completely free. It's a completely free hotline. You know, they say that you have uh, the right to an attorney when you're arrested, mm -hmm. and that's true. Um, right here in New York City, they give you a public defender when you're arrested, but many times it's too late. You've already been interrogated by the police. Uh, you've signed a statement, and then you're placed with a lawyer. You know, with good call, as soon as you're arrested, if you call our hotline, the first person you speak to is a lawyer. That lawyer will invoke your rights, tell the police not to question you, and get started on your case, and it's completely free. You know, you know, you're, you're clearly somebody who's devoted to helping the black community. How are you feeling this morning, my brother, after the verdict in Breonna Taylor's uh, murder case? How, you, how do you feel? How's your spirit? Man, to be honest, um, I'm numb. I'm numb. This has been a long year, um, followed by, you know, or, or you know, we, we've seen this so many times before that it just feels as if, you know, it's the same rhetoric same business as usual. Um, I think that it's just another wake up call. Um, I don't know how many wake up calls we need, but you know, it's, it's, we got to keep us safe. There, there's no one that really has our back. Uh, and folks that say they're not political, or, you know, this isn't their fight. Uh, you have a target on your back if you're a black person. That's real. Understand that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a time where I believe that solidarity is key. Um, I'm appreciative for y'all to even give me this opportunity. Um, we all got to stick together in this time. Uh, we all got to look out for each other because if not, who else? That's right. We're appreciative no. of you. This is a service that I think is really beneficial. I hadn't even known about it previously. So I can just imagine how many people you've helped over the years. Can you just yeah, give absolutely. us some of that information? Yes. Yeah, so we've done almost 5,000 calls since we started four years ago. Um, and one of the craziest things is that when we started initially, we were doing, you know, probably about 50 calls a month and then it went to 100. And we have an outreach team that goes out and hits the pavement, you know, all year. Uh, rain, sleet, snow, they're going out and handing out cards. But one thing that we say is that we can't correlate, you know, us going out into community and handing out these cards to thinking that somebody's going to get arrested. Um, it's like the right people knowing about you in the wrong time. But luckily, you know, we're able to be out there in the community handing out this resource that when people get arrested, you know, they know who to call. So um, in light of the protests that have been happening recently, I think one of the things that we've seen is that people knew to call our hotline number. And we saw an increase of over 4,000%. Uh, when the George Floyd protests initially broke, we did almost 2,000 calls uh, and didn't miss a call. We had lawyers taking shifts, uh, taking naps. We had volunteer lawyers that actually emailed us and joined our platform, which was amazing. Um, but, you know, we're, we're always making sure that we can build our hotline, add more lawyers to our, to our platform um, so that we can continue supporting the calls that come in. There's 700 arrests that happen every day in New York City. Uh, I was going to so ask that. For, for attorneys that want to get involved, how can attorneys get involved? Because I'm sure, like you said, so many calls come a day, but let's say there's an attorney that's listening right now and be like, hey, I want to be part of this project. I want to help 
how can they get involved? So you can email us at volunteer at good call, G O O D C A L L dot N Y C, and just shoot us an email and someone will get back to you. Isn't it ironic that people are getting more time for protesting police brutality than the actual police officers who are killing and brutalizing people? It's crazy. And, you know, it's, it, it just shows where, um, where the morals of a lot of folks in this country are, the ruling class, where what they actually believe in. You know, um, it's, it's, I still can't believe that saying Black Lives Matter is believed to be a hate group. What? <laughs> What saying that someone's life matters means that you're a part of a hate group. Um, it, it's scary. And I think that that's the time now that we got to think about that where us defending our own humanity is seen as a threat. What does it really mean? I love your shirt, man. Fuck a false arrest. Have, have you ever been wrongfully arrested? Yes, yeah, so I've been arrested uh, twice. Uh, the first time I got arrested, I was 16 years old. Um, and I grew up here in New York City. I grew up in Far Rockaway. But I didn't even get arrested when I was living in Far Rockaway. I was living in Elmont um, and happened to, you know, go to Manhattan one day uh, with some friends uh, to go pick up. You know, when the sidekicks came out, the sidekick cell phones? Yep, yep, yep. Ad's going to get my sidekick uh, from, from a friend because I was, I was buying a phone. And on my way back from the city, I had a friend uh, that thought he was shorty low. That's when they know came out. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was <laughs> on it between the subway cars. And he threw uh, McDonald's bags on the subway cars, on, on the, on the, uh, on the, on on the, the track. tracks. Right. Yeah. And he was behind me. I had no idea. So we walk into the next car and we see five dudes and they tell us to get off the train. We think we're about to scrap with them. No, it turns out that they're undercover police officers. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, all right, I think that, you know, I'm a negotiator. I've been that since, since I was young. I'm a negotiator about this situation. Uh, I had cut school that day, so we already in the room. Um, I failed a test earlier. I went to school. I got my test that I failed. I had that in my back pocket. They turned me around and frisked me. My whole good kid narrative was going. I failed that test. They saw that. We ended up getting arrested, and he took us to central booking. Uh, one of them took us to the precinct first, and and they stripped up of all of our identification that we, um, you know, everything that you would have your your your, your belt, your your shoelaces, all of that. Um, fingerprinted us, and I'm sitting there like, what's going to happen? I thought that you know you you go to the precinct, they'll let you go. We ended up having to go to central booking. Um, I'm raised a single parent, Guyanese mother. Uh, so I'm nervous what my mother's going to do because now it's eight hours later. I'm supposed to be in school. I haven't come home yet. Um, I'm still figuring out, you know, what I'm going to do sitting in central booking. So I ended up calling my sister um, and I let her know that I had no idea what was going on, where I was going to be. Um, luckily, uh, fast forward, I ended up getting out later on that night. Um, and that was just a wake-up call to me that just going to the city for something quick uh, and not having an ID, I can end up being arrested. But one of the things about that situation that was so traumatic was the fact that, you know, I was in the cell and I'm hearing everybody else's story and people, people, everybody's going about their day, you know, and then they ended up getting arrested. And we all are just sharing these stories. And it's like, you know what, me having this incident is just a common thing that happens. I know as I'm talking about this now, there's so many people that have been arrested for just, you know, you thought you were going to go somewhere, your license was suspended, now you end up in jail. But the treatment that you get when you get arrested can really uh, uh, change the trajectory of your case. You know, some of these police officers are uh, power hungry. You may not even make it to the to the precinct in this day and age. So that was a wake up call to me, just seeing how folks were treated, seeing people that were in the cell that got beat up. You know, um, that was my first arrest, and that was something that was scary to me, and I had no idea what to do. But I kept going after that. Damn. So so uh, listen. So that I'm, I'm sure that's what sparked the idea for Good Call NYC. So what what are some of the steps after being arrested? You know, when somebody calls Good 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 Call NYC, what are the, what are the steps you guys take? Immediately after. So, yeah, the first thing that happens is when you call our hotline, you are connected to an attorney. That attorney is going to ask where you are. They're going to ask some of the pertinent information. 
You're gonna tell them that information. The next thing that happens is that they're gonna speak to the arresting officer and tell them not to question you. That's them invoking your rights. On the back end, they're gonna get started on the case by filling out some of the information that you gave them and then sending that to the corresponding attorney that will be seeing you at your arraignment the next day. So when you go to arraignment the next day at Central Booking, you're meeting an attorney that already has all this pertinent information about you, rather than you know you just getting to know them five minutes before you see the judge. So they have more time to get started on your case. Um, so our hope is that with this person being able to have this early legal intervention, that's what we're calling it, uh, folks will be able to have a better case outcome. It's all about time. Every second matters when you get arrested. So having a lawyer on the case right away really can change your case outcome. True indeed. Now let me ask you a question. Do you have plans on expanding it just out of the five boroughs? Because so many different people need help in so many different places. Man, you know what? New York is a utopia um, for, for the legal system. When I, I've been traveling around the country and I've just been seeing that there's so many different places where legal support is needed. Um, you think about the South, many times people are arraigned and then given a lawyer. You know, um, it's, it's crazy that you can see this. So yes, in short, we want to expand across the country. We want this to be a recommendation for our criminal legal system. Um, you see how people are talking about cash bail. I want to have that same narrative about early legal intervention. Many times people are talking about how you get people out of jail. We need to, we need to do this. Um, and you're looking at the endpoints. We're not examining the entryways. How are people ending up into the system? You know, they're getting arrested, they're making statements without having legal representation, and then they're getting sold up the river. You know, you're signing statements because you're under duress, you're coercing the signing, and, and then you lose your freedom. But if folks have access to a lawyer at that point of arrest, it may change their case uh, or your case outcome immensely. Think about all the rich people that get arrested. What's the first thing they do? They got a lawyer on retainer. Envy, I'm pretty sure you got a lawyer on retainer. <laughs> yes, I do. You know, so anything that happens, people do is they have a lawyer on retainer. But why is it not that the same way for somebody living in the Bronx, somebody living in Queens? But, you know, they're put up in a case, and now you're fighting with one arm behind your back. All right. All right. Well, we appreciate you for checking in and giving the website information yeah. and the phone number again. Yes. Yeah, so you can, the hotline number is one eight triple three good call And I'm going to give you the number, which is one eight three 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 four six six three two two i'm gonna say that again one eight three 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 four six six three two two and you can find us at good call g-o-o-d-c-a-l-l -L dot n-y-c we are uh completely free 24 hours a day seven days a week we are the only tech enabled hotline in this city if anyone gets arrested we have mechanisms in place so that when you call our hotline, we have lawyers working around the clock. I know there are other numbers, but we are the only tech enabled hotline in this city. So please let that sink in. We make yes. sure that we put all the all, all the, all the uh, mechanisms in place so that we don't have folks missing calls because getting support is important. All right. Well, thank you brother for checking in. Thank we you appreciate brother. You. Appreciate you, King. Thank you, John. Appreciate you and no one, no one gets turned away, right? If they call, if it's too busy, everybody's available can get help no one gets turned away i always say you know it's either a good call or a good call i live in this community you know i have to walk around here so i want to make sure that everybody understands that you know our lawyers are treating this as if your family as if it's, if, if it's their loved one that they have to uh represent so I really, all right you know this opportunity thank you all right well it's jelani england thank you for joining us again brother peace Love you. All right, it's Peace, the Breakfast King. Club. Good morning.